It's the ultimate Star Wars fan celebration. Strap in for a ride to a galaxy far, far away at the happiest place on Earth. Because on this episode of Random Land, we finally made it to Disneyland's Star Wars night. This event was beyond my wildest expectations. Prepare to make the jump to light speed at Disneyland after dark. I didn't expect this to happen, but we're back. At Disneyland on Star Wars Night. And it's all kicking off right now. The time has arrived, and Star Wars Night has officially begun. Make the jump to light speed and enjoy your evening here at Star Wars Night. I've just made my way into the park with the last of the Jedi and the Sith and the scruffy nerf herders. That's me. For another Disneyland After Dark event. A special ticketed After Hours event with, as you have probably already surmised, a Star Wars theme. An adventure through a galaxy far, far away. A galaxy that Disney has owned for a decade now. So what better theme for one of Disney's After Hours events? And in the five years since they did the first Star Wars night, they have taken things up a notch. Starting with special fireworks. projected on it, light speed characters. It is so weird that two of my all-time favorite things from childhood have combined in this weird way. Disneyland and Star Wars. It's so much, I almost don't know how to feel about that. Not that Star Wars was never big, but it's certainly never been this mainstream before. And there was never a way to celebrate it like this. Alright, time to break away from the noise of the DJ in the hub, because this whole park is full of Star Wars offerings. And since the very first Star Wars night, which happened five years ago, which I was here for filming. They have added a heck of a lot of features. Look at this. It's the Cantina Van above the Golden Horseshoe Saloon. Dude, this is awesome. I never thought I would see this out here. And these guys keep appearing over and over all night long. I bet Walt Disney was never expecting that to be on top of this saloon. What an out of this world performance! That was mind blowing, and we've only just begun to step into the park. There's not too much Star Wars going on in Frontierland, other than the fashionable Endor soldiers running around. But I had to duck away from all the noise of the hub to study tonight's map. And it looks like there's a lot going on, a lot to get to, and it is spread all over the place, all over the whole park. Except for Adventureland over here. Ah, but this was a nice break. Okay. Looks like we're heading back into the thick of it, back out to Main Street. Because there's some more craziness about to go down. I don't know where we're going to see the rest of the park. It's hard to talk out of here because that DJ music is so loud. But when you get to the foot of Main Street, where things quiet down somewhat, there are a couple of epic animated character photo ops down here that people are very excited for. And in a couple of minutes, supposedly, something awesome is going to kick off. The Fleet of Fandom. For some of the most dedicated hardcore or costume fans are theoretically going to assemble down here in Town Square and then march along Main Street, USA. I think uh, Disneyland thought there were going to be more of them. Probably because a lot of fans are in other parts of the park checking out the photo ops and rare characters and treats and foods but this group is about to march and we are going to see them do it. Alright, here they come. The march is about to begin. And look at this. They're being joined by Mickey and Minnie leading Fleet of Fandom on Bob Gurr's fire truck. Look at that! Here they come. The Star Wars fans dressed in their Star Wars finest. Look at the shines of that crowd. 
Not as big as the crowd for the fireworks, but still nice and beefy. Look at this. This is awesome. They are collecting people along the way as they go. Look at Mickey dressed like R2D2. Minnie's dressed like BB-8. And here comes the fleet of fandom. This is awesome. When I was growing up as a nerdy Star Wars fan, where were all these people? I didn't know I could have had so many friends out there in the galaxy. This is incredible. It looks like they're rounding the corner now and we are headed towards the castle. More and more Jedi and Sith and Rebels and Resistance and First Order and fans and fanatics and Disney people gathering. And look at this. Now I have to decide, do I join them even though I'm not dressed up or do I stand on the other side and try to see the epic view of all these fans in front of the castle. Oh my gosh. Look at these people gathering. Look at them gathering. This is awesome. Okay, let's get out of the way of the fun pick. Because I have the feeling Mickey and Minnie are about to get in this sick pick. It's going to be a sick pick with Mick and Min. Yes, here they come. Mickey and Minnie. It's happening. The ultimate fun Star Wars pick. Off they go, back into the darkness from whence they came. It may not have been one of the special character photo ops or anything like that, but that was incredible, especially because we all know that Star Wars is about the fan community. All right, let's get out of here because the DJ is about to kick off again. All right, gang, it's time to head to the home of Star Wars at Disneyland for my entire childhood. Tomorrowland, where in 1987, when I was just four years old, Star Tours opened to the public. The first original Star Tours. Based on the original trilogy with Captain Rex, a flight to Endor. Ooh. And back then, this was the uh, ultimate spot right, to visit for any Star Wars fan. The only place you could visit in real life. Piece of the Star Wars universe. Now, it looks a little different these days. They've spruced it up over the years as more and more movies have come out. But Star Tours and this C-3PO and R2-D2 will always have a special place in my heart, along with the creepy Admiral Akbar and company up there in the control tower. Weird. Spooky. R2-D2, just what do you think you're doing? Get back to work before they deactivate I've told this story many times, but this was also the only place as a kid you could come and buy any Star Wars merchandise or toys at a store. At the exit to the ride here at the Star Trader. It still has a giant original trilogy X-Wing inside as well as tons of Star Wars merchandise for fans both new and old. Not to mention, it still contains stormtroopers in here. Although they look a little different than Darth Vader and his troopers from back in my day. Oh, dude, yes. Me and Return of the Jedi are the same age. I should get this. This is where, as a kid, I bought my only Star Wars toys, these little rubber figures that were actually based off the TV cartoon droids. I played with my original little rubber R2-D2 so much that the paint wore completely off of him. I took him everywhere with me, and for years there was no way to replace him. Not until the 90s, of course, when all the Star Wars merchandise made its way back into stores. And as far as Star Wars merch goes, it's been pretty much non-stop ever since. That's why when I think old school Star Wars and Disneyland, I'm always going to think of the Star Trek. And since back then, other than Star Tours, there was no sort of Star Wars ride. And certainly no Star Wars land. I would always ride Space Mountain and pretend it was a Star Wars ride. And of course tonight, it is a Star Wars ride because they've once again brought back Hyperspace Mountain. Even though they now have a whole Star Wars land, which I hope we'll get to, it looks like they have not forgotten Tomorrowland at Star Wars night. Because there are some sweet photo ops out here. Inside of the overflow queue for Star Tours, I can see through the doorway Han Solo in Carbonite. And I hear Jabba the Hutt's in there. Now, I know standing in these lines can be deadly because they can be uh, quite tasty, quite long. And it means you might miss out on a lot of other stuff going on at Star Wars night. But, dude, if Jabba the Hutt's at Disneyland, I have got to check it out. Oh, my gosh. Look at there he is. Captain Solo. And he's frozen in carbonite. That is so awesome. I want one. I'm on Jabba's side now. I totally get why he'd want one of these to hang up in his palace. That's so awesome. But much more importantly, look at this. Would you look at the size of that hut? Dude, that is epic. And look at this guy with the green lightsaber. Ignite the green. Oh. Oh, oh. Dude, and look at this. It's salacious crumb. <laughs> this is awesome. This is at Disneyland. Sick pig time. 
Oh my gosh. I never thought I would encounter Jabba the Hutt at Disneyland, much less salacious crumb. True, it's only sort of a half of a Jabba. But it works, and that's the important thing. Old school Star Wars original trilogy, Jabba the Hutt. Oh. Never thought I would ever see this stuff out here. Just a real quick close up on Han, look at that. Look how they massacred my boy. Oh dude, worth the wait, worth the wait. Wait a minute. What's that I hear? What's going on out here? Oh my gosh, it looks like it's the March of the First Order! Captain Phasma's not deceased after all! And here she comes with all her homies! I heard they're looking for Buzz Lightyear. They're not gonna find him in this sector. He's vamoosed! Wow, dude, look at that! Say what you want about the new Disney Star Wars! Those First Order Stormtrooper designs were awesome! I am so surprised and delighted we managed to get this much done. We caught the fleet of fans, we caught the march of the First Order, we saw Mickey and Minnie, the fireworks, Han Solo and Carbonite, the Cantina Band, Jabba the Hutt. That is already way more than I thought I was going to see tonight. Not because I technically didn't get here on time, but because, like I might have mentioned earlier, I wasn't expecting to come to Star Star Wars night at all and look at this real quick. Do you know who that is? That's the Dark Lord of the Sith. Darth freaking Vader is over there. This is one of those sort of walk past, walk by photo ops, which is sort of how they should all be because that way the line moves a lot faster. All right, they're coming. They're coming back. The Sith Lord. Oh, look at this. Look at this. The Star Wars content I came for! Darth Vader, the greatest bad guy in cinema history. That is epic. the area is secure. Your destiny lies with me. Assert your feelings. You know this to be true. This will be a day long remembered. <laughs> It's Darth Maul coming to steal Darth Vader's thunder! Oh, it's you, Lord Vader! I've come to serve you! Oh, is full with this <laughs> See, look at this, look how much better this is. The line moves a lot faster and you can get pretty darn close. And hello, Mr. Maul, or Sifter Maul? Uh, you are very scary! Very scary in real life! Uh, I remember you from the Taco Bell Cup! Uh oh. Darth Vader's gonna be upset when he sees Padme here. That just goes to show you, you never know what could happen at Star Wars night. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah! Unfortunately, I did not secure a ticket to Star Wars night or any of the other late nights for this part of the year here at Disneyland. So I didn't think I was gonna make it to Star Wars night at all, but at the last minute, my good friend Stormtrooper Chris, who is a 501st Stormtrooper, gave me his extra ticket to this event. So I didn't really prepare or do any research on the offerings tonight, and as a result, I was totally Totally unprepared for this. Watch me get a roster over here. Hi, Mama. Luke, I love you, Luke. I love you too, Leia. Don't worry. And R2D2, R2 I also love you. Yes. This will be a day long remembered. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. That is awesome to me, Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, C3PO, R2. They are the Star Wars, especially Luke. No matter what Ryan Johnson says, that is the coolest thing ever. Thank you, Stormtrooper Chris. Dude, you would think that Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars land that they've added here since the first and original Star Wars nights out here would have all the best stuff, but so far, no, no way. For this old school Star Wars fan, Tomorrowland is stealing the show, taking the cake. And I hear there's one more character I really want to see who keeps appearing up on this balcony. And I don't care if I miss every other thing that happens out here tonight. I am determined to see him. Because how much better does it get than the Emperor of the freaking galaxy? Look at that. Here comes Emperor Palpatine. Hail to the Emperor! Huh. Nobody wanted to hail but me. Look at him. He does not look happy. Far too many Jedi here for his taste. That is freaking awesome. Emperor Palpatine with his old school Imperial Guards from Return of the Jedi. That guard up there was telling him that he didn't think Star Wars Night was going to happen. But the Emperor was like, oh, I'm afraid Star Wars Night will be quite 
operational when our friends arrive. <laughs> Stick a fork in me. I am good. I just saw Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Leia, Emperor Palpatine, Jabba the Hutt. All of the Star Wars characters I have known and loved for 40 years, or however long it's been since I first popped that VHS tape in. Decades, my friends. Decades. I do not begrudge anyone their fandom, man. Whatever kind of Star Wars you like is whatever kind you like. Whether that's original trilogy stuff or animated stuff. Prequels, sequels, Ewoks, Battle for Endor. Or for me, what I grew up with and loved was the original trilogy and then the expanded universe or what is now called Star Wars Legends all the original sequel books and comics which I like better than the modern Disney sequels although I've been known to enjoy a Mandalorian episode or three and it's funny when I was a kid and I would read all of the Star Wars novels you know Heir to the Empire or the Jedi Academy books especially once the prequels came out people would be like no way man that's not the real Star Wars anymore so, I don't get into those contests now. For me, it'll always be old school original trilogy on top, the old expanded universe next, and then whatever comes, comes. For other people, though, it's totally different. By the way, how sick are these throne photo ops, especially the Emperor's throne? And don't think, I didn't take a sick pic over here myself. Oh, went for grandma. Anyway, part of the reason I didn't plan on coming to Star Wars night is I thought I would be out of town, but the van is back in the shop. Had a chance to fix a couple other things on it. So it just didn't seem like it was in the cars. I'm totally stoked that this surprise opportunity came up. And even though these events are completely frustrating every time because there is so much to do, you cannot possibly see, much less do it all, especially with the links of the lines and the treats and all the entertainment. I must say that on the flip side, that same list of features makes them incredible. Go back and compare my episode from 2018, the first ever Star Wars night at Disneyland, to what they offer out here tonight at the new Star Wars night. There's no comparison. In terms of value for money, they have only boosted what you get for the ticket. And say what you want about the cost of it. Nothing remotely close to this ever existed back in the day for any of us Star Wars fans. This is something that we could have only dreamt of back in the 90s or the late 80s. Forget that, even at the turn of the century or in the 2010s. It's unbelievable. I think one of the secrets to these late night events is never come out on the first one. This is definitely not the first Star Wars night this year. When I started filming out here, I was one of two, three people out here doing it. And now with not just YouTube, but Instagram, all the live streaming, and especially, especially TikTok, there's a lot of competition for the first night of anything or the opening of anything. A lot of people are out here trying to get the first picture, trying to get the first video clip, trying to get home the fastest and upload first. I try not to play that game, but I must admit, sometimes I'm part of the problem as as it were, what am I gonna do though? Quit my job? I don't think so. But I must admit, it is calmer, quieter, less people clamoring and pushing and shoving for that photo op, and the lines are still long here for some of the photo opportunities. But I feel like there's a lot more people tonight willing to go, ah, that line's a little long, I'll skip it. As opposed to the first night crowds. Maybe that's just my imagination, but that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting out here. So that's my pro tip to you. If you actually enjoy Disneyland, if you're actually coming out here for the love of the park, the fantasy, the magic, the experience. Never try to be first. Don't worry about opening days of things and closing days of things. Don't worry about taking millions of pictures and video clips. It's better just to live it and be present. Easy for me to say, I know, I know. It's a do as I say, not as I do situation a little bit. But for what it's worth, and I know nobody cares about my old man opinions, that's what I would advise. Oh, look at this, over here in Fantasyland. It's that little creamsicle droid from Rebels. <laughs> Can't help it. He always reminds me of a cream sickle. I never finished Rebels. I did watch a little bit of it. I was super stoked that the Ralph McQuarrie influence was back in there, art-wise. I hear good things, but... That's kind of the problem with the Disney era of Star Wars. Everybody always only says good things. I personally don't trust it when somebody just likes everything, thinks every event is great, every new ride is great. Every new movie or every new show is great. You gotta have some opinion, you know? It doesn't mean you have to hate on everything just because it's not to your taste, but... It also doesn't make you a hater just because you say something is not to your taste. Like, for me, by the time George Lucas got around to making the prequels, the story was substantially different. The mood was different, the vibe was different, and he had every right to change his story and send it in a new direction, but I was a little bit disappointed. And when the sequel movies came out, I gotta be honest with you, I thought that all the old Expanded Universe stories were a lot better, personally, you know? I liked a lot of the new elements, I liked what they were going for, I really liked the cast, 
pass, but I just didn't like whether they took the story. I still went to the movie theater for them. I even went to the movie theater and watched the one that I hated the most ten times. Ten times! And again, Disney had every right to change Star Wars or tell whatever stories they wanted to. Just like they're doing on Disney Plus, and some of the Disney Plus stuff is hit or miss for me. I really like The Mandalorian, I didn't like The Boba Fett one. I don't think you have to like every piece of something or everything a company does to be a true fan. And personally, I also don't think you have to obsess over or, you know, really emotionally hate on something you didn't like or that was disappointing either. Maybe I'm just uh, getting older or maybe I'm just a true Jedi now, but I like to have a nice balance in the Force when it comes to my fandom, you know? Like, for example, I love Disneyland. I mean, I love it so much. Grew up across the street. I fantasize about getting to come here all the time. And every time I walk through this gate, I try to put that in my brain and remember to be grateful and excited about coming here. Never take it for granted, ever. To realize I'm one of the luckiest people on the planet when I'm in here. I love Walt Disney's classic Disneyland. And then modern day Disney came and built this in here. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, all based on the new Star Wars not what I would consider my Star Wars. They changed the layout and vibe of Walt's original park. They did lots of stuff that I don't particularly care for. But I really appreciate the theming. I really appreciate there's a real life Star Wars place to come and I really appreciate getting to see a life size Millennium Falcon in real life, even if it does have that square radar dish on it. Personally, I don't come back here very often, not too often, but I love the fact that there are people who absolutely love this land and that it's one of their favorite places on the planet. I think that's so cool. There are other people who absolutely hate it back here and they don't have to come back here. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I'm meh. Although I must tell you, I always love the Millennium Falcon. That is so sick. So sometimes I come back here, sometimes I don't. Is any of this making any sense? I just never understood why there's a war of fandom. Some people like Formula One, other people like NASCAR. Some people like baseball, other people like football. I grew up liking punk rock and nerdy stuff like Star Wars and Star Trek and getting my rear end handed to me sometimes and punched in the face for it. I also loved Disneyland and wouldn't shut up about it at a time where, let me tell you, that was a very uncool thing for a teenager or a grown man to enjoy. I know often people uh, shout out backstories like this just to try to be like, you know, I liked it before it was cool. It's definitely not the point I'm trying to make. All I'm trying to say is that because of all that, I have never really understood why people get so crazy on each other. The weird thing is, I feel like it's mostly online. Nobody's ever come up to me, to my face, and been like, you like Return of the Jedi? And I don't see anybody walking up to the people dressed up like Ahsoka and being like, oh man, Clone Wars lame. I think people are a lot more decent than you would believe if all you do is pay attention to how they behave online. I mean, look at all these people out here. Star Wars fans of all different kinds, all getting along. And all getting a gander at the man DeLorean. Dude, believe it or not, this is my first time seeing him at Disneyland. I keep coming to the park like right when he's gone away for the day. So that means this is also my first time seeing the little baby Yoda. I mean, Grogu in person. He's so cute. Just when you think you're getting baby Yoda burnout, you see him either on the show or like that again. And you're like, no, I love the little guy. It's like seeing a little kitten. Who could get sick of seeing a little kitten? It's really weird how they have uh, Mando, or Din Djarin, or the Mandalorian, or whatever you want to call him, over here with uh, Grogu, or Baby Yoda, or whatever you want to call him. Just kind of chilling, no line, he's not really walking around the land, he's sort of in one spot, but kind of surrounded, it's weird. He sort of picks and chooses who he wants from the crowd to come and hang out with him and take a fun pic, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm looking for a guy on a stolen speeder bike. But I gotta tear myself away. I had to remind myself, like, he's out here all the time. He's not out here just for Star Wars night. And the same goes for Rey, Chewbacca, and all the other Star Wars land characters out here that I've seen. There's only about 20 minutes left to go for this event. What I'd really like to see are some more rare characters, if I can. Now, supposedly, somewhere outside of Star Wars land, or Star Wars town, as I call it, over here in Critter Country, they have got more of my favorite characters, such as the Jawas. Look at this little guy over here trying to do deals with people and trade droid parts going back and forth beckoning the next group hanging out with that r2 unit with a bad motivator the jawas are one of my favorite things ever i really wanted to linger and get a fun pick but there's no time if i'm going to at least try to snag a glimpse of another one of my absolute favorite star wars creatures the freaking ewoks oh yes that's right you heard me I love the Ewoks! Let me tell you, that was the uncoolest of all uncool things back in the day to admit that you loved Ewoks. Look at this guy. That's awesome. I'm not gonna lie to you, he's a little weird looking. He's an unusual looking Ewok. But then again, 
aren't they all? I just went back and watched the 40th anniversary like screenings in the theater of Return of the Jedi. And it's the weird like special edition, like the Blu-ray edition. So of course they changed it and made the Ewoks blink, which is so weird looking. I always thought they were creepy because they didn't blink. Turns out I was wrong, they're even creepier when they do. Wow. All right, I'm tempted to get in line, but I see one other photo op here and Star Wars night's about to end any second. Oh uh, yes, down here by Winnie the Pooh. Look at this. It's a speeder bike photo op. We've had this before at previous Star Wars nights, but it doesn't change the fact that it's awesome and it's Return of the Jedi themed and very appropriate for this year, the 40th anniversary of the last good Star Wars movie they ever made. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, calm down. The last of the original, classic, analog Star Wars movies. How about that? Dude, I would love to own a full-size speeder bike replica. As you guys know, I was just up in the California Redwoods on the Redwood Highway. I have been to all of the places where they filmed and or even the private Redwood land that looks nothing like it did when the shield bunker or any of that stuff was there now. Nothing but stumps. They just logged it during COVID. Luckily, everything else was public land or parks you can still visit today. You can still go to Endor. I love it up there, not just for the natural beauty, but also because all I'm hearing is Ewok horns and yub nub in my head and that sound, you know, you know. Not only do I love the original trilogy, I also, uh, I happen to love me some Ewok movies too, which if you've ever seen them, you know, now, as an adult. Much like the Ewoks cartoon or the droids cartoon, they're not the height of cinematic achievement, but I loved those as a kid, especially when they were on the Disney Channel or on cable. We'd record them on VHS and watch them over and over and over. Oh, Splash Mountain. How I love thee. Soon you shall go away forever this very month. But we'll get to that in a future adventure. For now, it's time to check out all that great cosplay as we make our way down Main Street and towards the exit here at the closing of Star Wars Night. So many fantastic costumes, so many fantastic fans, and that is what makes Star Wars Night so special and so different from the other Disneyland After Dark Late Night events. I don't love DJ parties and I don't love long lines, but let me tell you, this event is worth it for the Star Wars fan. So many characters, so many lightsabers, so much fun. Pretty epic, dude. I can remember back in the day just wishing that I had Jedi robes never accomplished that goal. I have most of the Stormtrooper armor like in the kit. It's not put together though. The old school Stormtrooper armor. I still have to find somebody to put it together for me. I'm not skilled in that way. But anyway, seeing all these Star Wars costumes here. I mean, you couldn't get stuff like that back in the day. This is just the time to be a Star Wars fan and get sick merch. Whether you like Disney Plus or not. All right, guys, the cavalcade of Star Wars characters continues. But since we're pretty much out of time, there's really only two more characters we've got to see. It's time for us to say goodnight to the host and hostess with the mostest. Goodnight, Minnie. Goodnight, Mickey. See you next time. You know why they're leaving, guys? Because they've done their duty. And now that we came, we saw, we Star Wars. We've pretty much done ours as well. There's just one last thing for you to do. And that is please, if you've enjoyed the last 10 years of Random Land, go down in the links below. Check them out. Follow them. See what you think. If you do that one favor for me, you'll have done your duty too. And that means, my friends, you can go home and swipe. Wow. It's no him. trouble. Hey, what are you trouble. doing? Wait here? a minute. I remember you Me? from Dark Forces. What? The video game. Oh. You were there. And your buddy was there. You were both yeah, there. You were there. I remember all right. you guys. That's You're right. Those That's two me. Two stormtroopers. The about? ones that number one and number two. Not that number I'm calling two. you number two, no, sir. No, of course, of course, of course not. That's right. Wow. Right, look at you guys, I'm guarding Darth Vader, doing your duty. You've done your duty. You better do it too. You can go home and. Sleep well. Wow. Move along. Move oh, along. Right. Move along. Move along. Move along. Dave Filoni? It's all music.